South African champion Bex Carolyn returns to off-road racing. Injury problems for top rider Jeremy Davies. Two top teams fight it out for championship honours. Another starring role in the 200 motorcycle class for Yuri Himan. The final round of the total GTE off-road championship, the Caledon 500, had all the makings of a dramatic event. With national championships settled in only two categories, it was make or break for those with championship aspirations. The competitors paraded through the streets of Vetna and brought the Free State Town to life. In the 200 motorcycle category, championship leader Brian Bontequinen needed only to finish in the top three to make certain of the title. I've hopefully wrapped it up. I've just got to make one point more than I did in Tongaland and I should have it all sewn up. So I'm going to just pace myself. I'm not going to go too slow because it's only a crash. With an outside chance of pipping Bontequinen at the post for the title, fireworks were expected from Yuri Himan. In the production vehicle category, the championship was a straight fight between veterans Wilfred Veslar and Dagmar Blankner and young Craig Hopkinson and Martin Spencer. Gonna go up there today and take it easy, try to get a good start position for tomorrow. And tomorrow I'm gonna go for it. Have to beat Wilfred. The danger move for Hopkinson and Spencer were Eastern Province crew Selwyn Robertson and Darby van der Valt. With the 250 motorcycle title already wrapped up, the pseudo star Patrick Andrews could end off the season by enjoying himself. Back in the 250 class was Springbok Jeremy Davies, having his last outing on the Truck Africa KTM. I just want to finish today's race. I'm going to ride it just all, like all the other races. I've got nothing to lose but a lot to prove. After his controversial exclusion from the results of the Mnet Lesotho Sunroof of Africa rally, Alfie Cox was out to prove a point. In the commercial vehicle championship, the major issue was who would finish second to Alfred von Fieren and Piet Pelsa. Former champions Arby Reinecke and Lucas Dreyer were hoping to end a dismal season on a high note and rookie Wiley Harrington was after Class 5 honours. I've still got a possibility of winning the Class 5 championship and uh, that's all I'm working for in my infant year of off-road racing. <laughs> the commercial vehicle championship was in the bag for Alfred von Fieren and Pierre Pelsa and they could also afford the luxury of a relaxed event. It was a different story in the 500 motorcycle category where Errol Dalton was under pressure from Hilton Hayward. For the round still to drop, you know, it just takes one problem with Errol's bike and I can easily take the championship. I think it would be difficult for me to beat him, you know, if he has a clean run, but uh, obviously try my best to be right up there. And... The consistent Dalton held most of the aces going into the Caledon, but could not afford to relax with Honda rider Cocky Bainham also in with a mathematical chance of taking the title. With Wade and Grant Perrin still having to drop points in terms of the championship format, the Special Vehicles Championship was a straight fight between Klaus Degener in the BP Chenoweth and Richard Schilling in the Motortech Race Co. The return of Books Carolyn and Kenny Schkolthammer placed a little extra pressure on Degener and Schilling, although Carolyn was in a casual mood. We've just come here really to have a bit of fun. Um, this car is actually 90% sold and uh, I just wanted to give it one last chance and Kenny and I decided that we'd come back and try and make this one three in a row because we're getting tired of shilling with winning three roofs in a row so we've won this race twice and we want to try and make it three in a row. For Mnet Lesotho Sunroof of Africa winners Richard Schilling and Ashley Thorne, victory was a must if they were to sneak the title with Schilling in a confident mood. Off-road racing is not a very predictable thing but having won the last two uh, like to make a hat-trick uh, in the national season as you do on the roof. There was pressure too for championship leaders Klaus Degener and Jeff Bell. Always a fighter, Degener is never one to shirk a challenge. The whole 
aim of the game is to ensure that we win the championship. We're we leading the championship. The only person that can beat us is Richard Schilling. Uh, he has to win. He has to win the race overall. We have to come worse than second overall to lose it. Jeremy Davies won the short 58-kilometer race in section one to determine start positions for the motorcycles for race in section two. He was closely followed by Alfie Cox, Willie Island, and Patrick Andrews. On the car side, Bux Carolyn and Kenny Schkolthammer took pole position, followed by Richard Schilling and Ashley Thorne, with Linton Draper and Mike Pretorius third in the Isuzu. Problems on racing section one meant Klaus Degner would have to produce another of his familiar charges through the field. If you never write off Klaus, uh, I'm sure he'll be going like hell. And uh, the one thing when Klaus really goes quickly is uh, he concentrates and uh, he tends to fall off a little bit less than uh, when he's relaxed. For those who enjoy a little Saturday lion, the customary off-road early morning start was massively put back an hour or two. There was a good turnout from Vetna residents and farmers from surrounding areas when Bix Carolyn and Kenny Schkolthammer led off the field with a tough 450 kilometers ahead of the crews. Richard Schilling and Ashley Thorne were followed by the radical Linton Draper Mike Pretorius Isuzu, which was a center of attraction all weekend. In hot pursuit were Springbok Rally stars Cassie Kutsia and Richard Leake, who are also looking for a return to top form. Race cam action is from the Kutsia Leake Toyota at high speed through the streets of Vetna. Out in the country, Bux Carolyn and Kenish Goldhammer were acting as pathfinders for those behind them. At the same time, the pair were trying to set a pace that would make them hard to catch. Richard Schilling and Ashley Thorne were doing the chasing. The pair were in devastating form late in the season and were looking for their third championship win in a row in the Caledon. behind them were Linton Draper and Mike Pretorius, who've had a torrid time this year in developing the impressive Isuzu, with plenty of V8 power at their disposal to perform to its maximum potential. The ever-consistent Alfred von Fieren and Piet Pelzer were again up among the frontrunners in the dealer team Toyota. Some good duels were developing early in the race, and not far behind them were Class 5 rivals Wiley Harrington and Johan Gerber in the privately entered Toyota, which was running minus bonnets. Richard Carolyn, elder brother of Bix, and affectionately known as Obut, was also running steadily in the single-seater lubrication equipment race co. With no navigator, the single-seater drivers are at slight disadvantage and rely heavily on consistent route marking. Bloemfontein driver Theo Kutsia and Ian Wedderburn were showing early good form in the imported Chev and were chasing Class 4 rivals Cassie Kutsia and Richard Leake. More race cam action from the Kutsia Leake Toyota illustrates that off-road racing is no Sunday drive through the park. The Kutsia Lee combination was looking good, with Selwyn Robinson and Darby van der Valt turning out to be the surprise package in Class 7. They held a healthy lead over Production Vehicles Championship contenders Craig Hopkinson and Martin Spencer. Brothers Wade and Grant Perrins were also going along comfortably enough at the head of the Class 10 field. production vehicle championship leaders Wilfred Veslau and Dagmar Blankner were not in the mood to take chances. After years of faithful service, the Astoria Bakery VW, dubbed the Bread Van, will be retired at the end of the season. Suitably attired for a drive through the countryside in a Jeep, Cliff Barker and Mike Redden were in control of Class 6 in the SVM. Back at the start, the bike brigade were busy making final preparations for their 450-kilometer bash through the Bundu. If I can stay in front, I'll stay in front, but uh, I'll ride a safe race. Uh, it's 
it's going to be a long way. It's going to be tough. Though. I'm first going to see how the marking is, and if it's okay, uh, if I can make my break, I'm going to make my break. But um, otherwise, I'll just stick with the boys and see when I can make my move. Off-road bike races are a different breed. They're a very fit and very tough band of young men who consistently put their bodies through a form of motorized torture. For Section 1 winner Jeremy Davies, conditions on the Caledon were a far cry from his previous outing, a romp through the ice and snow of Finland. Davies was soon into his stride, but as with leaders in the car category, being first man away has its disadvantages. Setting the pace and blazing a trail as first man out on the road is not always an easy job. Alfie Cox was content to sit behind Davies, waiting for any errors on the part of the leader, with third man Willie Island also playing a waiting game. For Errol Dalton, the priority was to stay ahead of Hilton Hayward in the 500 class. For his part, Hayward had to try and put pressure on Dalton and force a mistake. In the 200 class, it was a case of all or nothing for Yuri Himmann, who had an outside chance of snatching the title from Brian Bontequinen. <laughs> this rather large fellow showed what he thought of TV cameras and off-road racing, with leaders Bux Carolyn and Kenny Schkolthammer, the first of a string of cars and motorcycles that were to disturb his morning. Richard Schilling and Ashley Thorne were holding station in second place, but not far behind them were Linton Draper and Mike Pretorius in the awesome Draper plant hire Suzu, who were closing on the two crews ahead of them. There was plenty of evidence that Cassie Kutsia has a rally heritage. After falling behind the top runners, Kutsia was going all out to make up for lost ground. The likeable Cassie was displaying the car control that made him one of South Africa's top rally drivers. Kutsia and Leek were being buffeted around in the cab of the Toyota and were hard at work. Behind them, Alfred von Fieren and Piet Pelzer had made up ground in the dealer team Toyota and were pushing as hard as they could. Wiley Harrington and Johan Gerber were still giving chase in the privately entered Toyota. The enthusiastic Harrington is a top rally navigator turned off-road driver and has also had single-seater track racing experience. Theo Kutsia and Ian Wedderburn were also having a good run in the Chevy. For Kutsia, off-road racing is a far cry from the gentle art of painting and building model cars. The first real drama of the race came at Hobhouse, which was an optional refuel point for the cars. The Schilling Thorn and Carolyn Schkolthammer cars arrived at the refuel almost simultaneously, but while Schilling and Thorn made the briefest of stops, the Carolyn Schkolthammer car was in for running repairs, and the lead changed hands. With Carolyn and Schkolthammer still becalmed, Linton Draper and Mike Pretorius also pressed on in the Isuzu and moved into second place. Cassie Kutsia and Richard Leake took over third, with matters starting to look ominous for Carolyn and Schkolthammer. Uh, the one fuel pump's backed up. It's a scavenge pump that sucks off the, off the float, so what's happening, the thing's fluffing, so about 10 k's out here, the coal is missing, we decided we'd stop and replace it now. You'll make plenty on this section right. here, because it's a hell of a time. What is it? What's going to stop at other people as well? With Brother Bix headed for eventual retirement, Obert Carolyn was pressing on steadily and gradually moving up through the field in the single-seater race co. Approaching the Hobhouse refuel point, Jeremy Davies still led the motorcycle category. Content to play a waiting game, Alfie Cox always had the race leader in sight with a great duel developing between the pair. Mm -hmm. 
Willie Ireland had established himself in third place less than a minute behind the two leaders and was well placed to take advantage of mistakes. Errol Dalton had taken a firm grip in fourth place and the 500 class, but behind him there was a tremendous scrap going on at the head of the 200 class. Yuri Himan was being closely chased by Brian Bontequernan. At the head of the car field, the race had a familiar pattern about it, with Richard Schilling and Ashley Thorne in control. With the Draper Pretoria Suzu hit by a spate of punctures, Kasi Kutsia and Richard Leake had moved into second, but were en route to retirement. Alfred von Fieren and Piet Pelzer had also run into problems, elevating Wiley Harrington and Johan Gerber to third overall, and first in Class 5. Behind the Toyota, the patient Richard Carolyn had quietly moved through the field and was now in a threatening position. Embarked on their customary charge, Klaus Degener and Jeff Bell had made up 15 places to move into 8th position. Off-road regulars expected Degener to charge this a water splash, but on this occasion, discretion was the better part of valour. Back at the Hobhouse refuel, there was more drama, this time in the bike category. Slick work by Pit Crew saw Alfie Cox take over the lead from Jeremy Davies, who, once he got going, was not far from retirement. In thick dust thrown up by the car backmarker, Davies hit a rock and badly damaged his thumb. Willie Island was still going strong, and ever the showman could not resist the opportunity to indulge in a few antics. There was none of Ireland's exuberance where husband and wife team Arnold and Estelle Mattia were concerned. Among the pre-race favourites, the pair ran into a string of mechanical problems that eventually forced them into the role of spectators. There were more problems too for Degner and Bell, whose charge came to an end when it took them 45 minutes to repair collapsed rear suspension. Point repair, the secondary torsion has come off as well. Um, we'll try and get that back on, at least we can ride on the secondary torsion bar. Richard Schilling and Ashley Thorne, with the opposition in disarray, were now in complete control, with a lead of nearly 10 minutes. Next on the road was Richard Carolyn, who gradually ground his way into second place, although the race co was starting to sound a little rough. Wiley Harrington and Johan Gerber had moved into third in the Toyota Hilux, but were under pressure from Linton Draper and Mike Pretorius. A fired-up Draper had the spectacular Isuzu at full stretch and was soon to move into third place. The consistent Cliff Barker and Mike Redden were heading for a top-five finish and honours in Class 6 in the VA-powered SVM. They were being closely chased by Springboks and former national champions Arpi Reinecke and Lucas Dreher in the Sassel Ford, who were finally showing glimpses of their true form. Selwyn Robinson and David van der Valt had effectively killed off hopes Craig Hopkinson and Martin Spencer had of winning the production class championship. With Wilfred Wessler and Dagmar Blankner dominating class two, the championship honours were theirs for the taking. With Jeremy Davies no longer in the picture, Alfie Cox had built up a commanding lead at the head of the motorcycle field. He was around seven minutes ahead of Willie Island. With race distance running out, Errol Dalton was in fourth place and safely at the head of the 500 class. Dalton was coming under severe pressure from Patrick Andrews, who was eventually to slip into third place. In a great performance, Yuri Himmann was up into fifth place on the little 200 Kawasaki, ahead of Graham McLachlan and Steve Stoffberg.
Brian Bontequinning had only to finish to make sure of the championship, but even champions elect are prone to little mistakes now and then. Back at the finish in Vetna, it was smiles and champagne for Richard Schilling and Ashley Thorne. Lovely. Hat trick on the roof and a hat trick on the nationals. A 15 minute penalty for an alleged road infringement dropped Schilling and Thorne back to third place. The top three results are now provisional, pending an appeal. There were no such problems for a delighted Alfie Cox. It's always nice to go out with a win. Uh, try again next year. 250cc riders took the first three places, with Errol Dalton taking the 500 class and Yuri Himan the 200 category. 